What up, everybody? It's iPadBeatMaking.com here today on Friday, July 2nd, 2021, giving you some news you can use. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button as well as the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on the latest news, tips, tricks, sales, beats, reviews, updates, and more. And what a time it is to be an iOS music creator. We've got M1 iPads available and an embarrassment of riches when it comes to apps and that doesn't look like it's gonna change anytime soon. We've just gotten the release of the beautiful Synthmaster 2, which is based on the desktop version Synthmaster 2.9. And now that we've got that, even more apps appear to be on the horizon. First off, we've got the critically acclaimed gospel musicians dropping MK Sensation Extreme soon for iOS, and this thing is going to be loaded. First of all, it's gonna have 28 gigs of samples in 12 gigabytes of lossless format. It's gonna be AEV3 compatible, as well as external hard drive storage and sample streaming. Five insert effects per sound, global and master effects with dedicated sins for all. And one thing I love the most about gospel musicians apps besides the sounds themselves is the fact that you can run them on external hard drives. Seriously, why isn't every other developer with sample libraries doing this? We don't have a release date currently, but all signs point to the fact that it will be here soon. For a preview of this app in action on iOS, be sure to check out Brandon Rico's video on it here. Now, Tone Boosters also has something exciting on the horizon in the form of a synth, and it's called Tone Boosters Polyphony, or TB Polyphony. We currently don't have much more info than that, but they look like they've pushed it back a little bit in order to add some new features, touch things up a little bit. So we're looking forward to what it will offer. And finally, for all of you DigiStix lovers out there on iPad wishing for bigger and better, your prayers have been answered. The developer is releasing DigiStix 2, which I believe will be an iPad only affair. He does an extensive walkthrough on this video here, so be sure to check that out if it interests you. Now we're excited, lots to look forward to, iOS has gone places, been places, and going to even more places, and it just further validates your decision to get into iOS music production. What's not to love? You get great apps, you get great prices, and things just work when they work. But for those of you still on the fence, be sure to check out our video outlining the pros and cons of iOS music production here. And with that said, let's move on to updates. First off, we've got Colossus Piano, and this update provides the following software improvements. Improved instrument load time, allows now a high amount of audio unit instances, Use the new RAM bar on the audio unit user interface as an indicator for how many audio unit instances you can still deploy. Fixes several issues in conjunction with various audio unit host apps, for example, AUM and GarageBand. Shows now an estimated time for completing a download of a piano model. There is a restore update all button directly on the piano model screen. Fixes piano model download issues that have happened under certain conditions and several UI corrections and improvements. Elliott Garage Pulse has been updated to version 1.28, which adds auto map, press just the first key or pad on your MIDI controller, and all the 16 pads will be sequentially mapped. Added transport and metronome MIDI map, play, stop, record, and metronome can be triggered via MIDI CC. They've also improved the AUV3 full screen mode, and so much more. Funk Drummer has added a toggle cross snare to MIDI controls, as well as small improvements and bug fixes. Piano Motifs has added the fridge and dominant scale, added new serendipity accompaniment style. This accompaniment style generates a random bass note, chord, or rest for every beat based on the chord progression. Added new preset chord progressions for randomly generated motifs, chromatic mediant progressions and others, as well as fix the crash when certain melody type was randomly chosen and parallel scale chords were used in the chord progression. 
and Rock Drum Machine has added a toggle cross snare to MIDI control small improvements and fixed bugs, similar to that of Funk Drummer. Rosetta Sequencer Suite has an update that addresses a recent iOS update that made some labels in LFO invisible. And in multi-track DAW on the iPad, they've added a pin button AU plugins and instruments have a pin button to keep the plugins on screen. When opening a song, all pin plugins will restore their position so you can get right back to work from where you left off. Plugin size and position is now saved separately for portrait and landscape views or any other view sizes. Fix the latency issue with AU instruments and generators when Bluetooth devices were connected. Mix down, bounces, and track freezes with AU plugins are now filled precisely the same way as normal playback, so they should have identical renderings. The playhead will move across the screen while rendering. And fix an issue when importing audio with more than two channels. And for those of you who use multi-track DAW, I want to know your thoughts on it. Do you enjoy it? Let us know in the comments down below. New Rack AEV3 Effects Processor has been updated to version 1.44, which fixes an issue on smaller screen devices, which prevented access to options due to screen size, as well as other minor fixes. An audio bus mixer for music apps has fixed Ableton Link on iOS 14, and LK for Ableton Live in MIDI has added an undo redo support to Automation's editor, added and revised keyboard layouts for strummer effects, rules maker, DM1, DM2, gadget, etc. Save clip selected notes in area, incoming program slash bank chains messages, change LK selected patch. This is an experimental feature. Allow notes and follow actions to happen at the same time. Fix clip color when importing. Fix APC25 clip launching bug. Fix notes being wrongly created at the end of a clip while recording with quantization. Fix clip mutation in selected notes. Fix bug where composer keyboard wouldn't update correctly when switching layouts. And VS Visual Synthesizer, as I predicted due to the fact that it is made by the incredible developers at Imaginato, who also did LK. And this has added support for HDMI on iOS and standalone only. Added MIDI activity indicator. Fix modulator buttons, checked state. Fix a GIF not playing bug. Fix demo tempo when changing presets. Fix layer mono release state and fix the crack with the MIDI clock. So, as I predicted, we're gonna keep getting great updates on this app and I am here for it. So shout out to Imaginato for already getting on VS Visual Synthesizer. And Swam has elected to put fixes into all of their apps that include fixing MIDI notes, recording from virtual keyboards, as well as improved panic behavior and more. And Touch OSC has added radio HV example layout, script demo example layout, Added control surface toggle button, double tap option, added control tag string property, and more. And finally, we'll announce the winners of Tonality from last week's episode. To be entered, you needed to be subscribed to B Jammin' Since Birth's YouTube channel and leave us a comment letting us know that you did. And the winners are. And. So congrats to you both and thanks to Be Jammin' Since Birth for giving away the apps. To claim your codes, email us at iPadBeatMaking.com by Sunday, July 4th. Otherwise, they'll be recycled and given away to someone else. And now let's move on to sales. First of all, Apogee is having a 4th of July sale on select pieces of equipment. We cover all of it and let you know what we would grab if we were you or not grab if we were you in this video here. So be sure to check that out. First off, we've got Beat Hawk, which was $9.99. It's currently $4.99. Ravenscroft 275 Piano was $35.99. It's now $17.99. Magellan Synthesizer 2 was $14.99. It's now $3.99. Galileo Organ 2 was $14.99. It's also $3.99. Roxin Guitar Synthesizer was $19.99. It's currently $3.99. Tone Stack Pro Guitar Amps and Effects was $9.99, it's currently $3.99. Tab Builder was $1.99, it's currently $0.99. Cents. And Spark Verb was $29.99, it's currently $19.99. And we've been curious about Spark Verb, so this is definitely one we'll be taking advantage of during this sale. For those of you who have used it, what do you think? How does it compare to 
Pro R, the Tone Boosters Reverb, and all the other great reverbs on iOS. Do you think it's worth it? Let us know in the comment section down below. And with that said, we're about to get out of here. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please be sure to hit the like button, as well as the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on the latest news, tips, tricks, sales, beats, reviews, updates, and more. And be sure to check out some of the best kits available for iOS at iPadBeatMaking.com. It's iPadBeatMaking.com. Peace.